Y'all hear the tunes. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all hear them tunes? What is up, y'all? It is your girl, Pyrus. And today, we are going to be playing Scarlet Hollow. Um, I recently made a niche interest video about Scarlet Hollow, and it, I just want to play again. And I have a new PC, so none of my saves are on here, because I don't know how tech works, and I don't know how to transfer things over. So we're starting over today. I hope you're doing well. If you like this video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content from me. And we'll go ahead and get started. I'm so excited. <laughs> Should we do hardcore more hardcore mode? That's hard to say. We're gonna do that eventually, y'all. Oh my gosh, it's been a minute. Oh, uh, what's my city? What's the city we live in, y'all? Where do we live? Oh, this is the name of my um, Animal Crossing land. <laughs> okay, y'all. You already know the one we're picking, right? We always have to pick hot. I'm sorry, we're hot girls on this channel we are just bad bitches so you know we're gonna always pick hot let's see y'all i kind of want to do a talk to animals run i think we should do talk to animals and be hot we're just completely useless we're just completely useless with these two traits you jolt awake as the bus hits a particular part i cannot say that word to this day nasty bump you feel like you'd only just managed to start drifting off, and now here you are, awake again and still exhausted. For a moment, you're hazy on the details of where exactly here is, confusing this bus with the many others that came before it. But as your mind continues to reassert its existence in the waking world, the past few days come back into focus. Long lost cousin, the bad news, the 26 hours of bus rides with countless late night stops and seedy depots, how do you say that? that would have felt unsafe even in the middle of the day. You wouldn't normally find yourself traveling like this, but your cousin bought the tickets. Tabitha did that on purpose, y'all. Hindsight 2020, she wanted, cause I'm pretty sure she could have flew or something, or something. Like, you know, not, not 26 bus stops, y'all. Not 26, Tabitha did that out of spite. The funeral of Pearl and Scarlet, your cousin's mother and your aunt seemed like something you shouldn't ignore even considering your own late mother's rocky relationship with this side of the family. Y'all, I still, I want to know more about the mom. I really do. And like, who's the dad? Who's the baby daddy? Unfortunately, the end of your long journey is in sight. You're almost in Scarlet Hollow. Oh my gosh, this guy. So anyway, like I was saying, you know, he's still here. He's been sitting next to you for the past five hours, talking at you without pause. You're not sure he even stopped when you started to doze off. At first, you thought he was just being friendly, but that was several hours of one-sided conversation ago. I was up in Maryland looking for work, but mostly messing around because I was a dumb teen. Me and my buddies were doing our usual prank stuff, you know, pushing joggers into the harbor, that sort of thing. It's like, huh? Wait, what? Yeah, you know, teen stuff. So this girl comes up, swinging her purse, yelling about how she was going to call the cops or whatever. It was hilarious. She actually hit my friend and he said it hurts a lot. So I guess she really was mad and not just playing. I still don't like how he's gripping his toes in these. <laughs> that. That's crazy. But she kept swinging and soon enough she lost her balance and fell into the ar harbor all on her own. We didn't even have to push her. We had a good laugh and fished her out and her phone got soaked so she couldn't call the cops on us. We wound up hanging out all day. She kind of became my girlfriend after that. We've been on and off for about a year, so it's pretty serious. About five months ago, she tried to break up with me. <laughs> like, for real. And jeez, you ever get so mad you just want to, like, kill somebody? Hot. He did say he tried. Did he say she tried to break up with him? You can't even begin to imagine what that might feel like. Nobody's ever broken up with you. Yeah, I can't relate. <laughs> yeah, I would never relate. Yeah, I'm lying. Anyway, um... I'm gonna lean into the lean into the character. I honestly can't say anybody's ever tried to break up with me. <laughs> yeah, I should have known. I sound a little unhinged to someone like you. But if anyone ever does try to break your heart, you might be surprised how you might be surprised by how it changed you. I honestly could have killed that woman. Anyway, she's giving birth to our son right now, so I'm trying to get up to Virginia to be there for it. But I don't know if I'm like into that stuff. 
So I might just wind up on a bus to New York or something instead. I've always wanted to go there. Okay, what's wrong with you? Your girlfriend is giving birth right now and you're not thinking about- And you're thinking about ditching her to go have fun in New York? After she tried to break up with you and you threatened to kill her? Hey now, I never threatened to kill her. Okay, maybe over text just a little, but fatherhood is scary. Plus her mom is there, so it's not like she's alone. Her mom doesn't like me much, so I'd probably just make things super stressful. She'll understand, she's chill, not cool girl. Anyways, where'd you said you were headed? I- I didn't. No need to be nasty, I was just talking. Not like I'm gonna swallow you off the bus or anything. Plot to his, this is- this is Wade. Is that what his name is? Is that- what's- is that the guy's name that Tabitha has a relationship with? This is the guy with the, the napkin on his head. So if you aren't getting off at my stop, then you must be headed to Scarlet Hollow, right? Or the holler, as they call it in these parts. That's the only other stop until the bus turns around. I ride it pretty often, so I'd know. Almost nobody ever goes up that way, though come to think of it. I had a buddy, I had a couple of buddies who went up there for work in the mine. There's a coal mine up in the holler, you see, and there's always a job listing or two on the boards around there. I never wanted to do that thing myself, I like my lungs the way they are, thanks, but my buddies got desperate enough to try it. I haven't heard from them in a while, though. Now that I think about it, I should see if they're on Facebook. See how they're doing up there. I hope they didn't die. He looks back at his phone, for one focus, for once focus on something other than you. Oh, this is me. It was lovely meeting you. Hope you didn't get too bored without me around to talk to. Here, I have something for you. The stranger rifles through his pack before presenting you with a dripping bag of peanuts. I can feel my, my throat closing up right now, girl. They're boiled peanuts. I got them in a gas station a few buses back. I noticed you haven't eaten much, so I figured you could use them more than me. Plus, they dripped all over my bag, so I don't want to carry them anymore. Tip. Sometimes taking a dialogue option establishes few facts about new facts about who you are. I am actually allergic to peanuts. Oh. Huh. These could probably kill you then, huh? Well, like I said, I'm done carrying them. They're yours. The young man sets the peanuts down on the empty seat next to him. The juice dribbles out through the bottom of the bag and into the upholstery, upholstery, instantly soaking it in peanut brine. And with that, I leave you. Safe travels, friend. Attempted murder. This is attempted murder. And like that, you're alone, the stranger's peanuts soaking the seat across from you. You do your best to hold your breath as the bus rattles to your destination. Next stop, Scarlet Hollow. End of the line. Almost there. I would be so nervous to meet Tabitha. Tabitha is so intimidating, y'all. My cousin, my cousin, she don't play. She don't play. She gets down. The bus finally comes to a stop. It breaks squealing. It's break squealing as it deposits you in front of the Scarlet Hollow bus station. So you only get a bus every week. I didn't notice this before. The sign reads bus station, but calling it that feels disingenuous. At best, it's a kiosk. Though for a small town like this, you're amazed there's so much as a road, let alone a bus that drives on it every week. The driver quickly shuts the doors behind you and starts the engine, kicking up dust clouds as he pulls away, eager to leave you in this place behind. <clears throat> hey, Pyrus. You instantly recognize the worn young woman from the few public photos of her on Facebook page. On her Facebook page, she's your cousin Tabitha, and she looks very annoyed to be here. I'll give her your condolences. I'm sorry for your loss, Tabitha. Yes, great. Thank you. Let's get back to the estate. I don't want to spend any more time down here than I have to. Your cousin turns and motions to an old BMW parked near the bus kiosk. You follow her, clambering into the dusty relic. Y'all, we're gonna have a, a great relationship with Cuzzo, okay? She's gripping that wheel. It doesn't take much driving before the only signs of civilization are the car you're in and the road you're on. Tabitha maintains an icy silence as she focuses on the road. Okay. Yes, we're both members of the dead. I, I always, every time I see that, I can't believe we never met before this. You have your mom to thank for that, or had, I guess. 
I wish I'd known about you. I don't know why my mom left or what kind of grudge she had against this side of the family, but I'm sorry. I wish I'd known about you. Whatever. What's done is done. How are you holding up? Fine. Okay, but if that ever changes, I'm here for you, alright? Even after I go home? Sure. Um, so the funeral. It's on Sunday, right? Yep, like I told you. Need any help planning? If you ever need help with errands or scheduling, feel free to ask. I know this stuff isn't easy. It's actually been fine. I just need the coffin and someone to dig a hole. Okay. You decide to sit in silence with your cousin as the car eases up the steep mountain road. Can you imagine that interaction right there? I think I would think about it for a good, like, two hours. I'd be like, why did I say that? Like, she definitely does not want me here. I would feel so uncomfortable at the Scarlet Estate. And here it is, the Scarlet Estate. Though it's seen better days, its crumbling elegance is not lost on you. Someone used to be cramped. Wait, someone used to cramp apartments in gray cities. Your mother told you about this place many times before she passed, always with an anger burning beneath her words. The faded majesty you once imagined doesn't quite compare with what's in front of you. A jarring blend of opulence and ruin. Honestly, the best way to describe it. As you stare at it, perched on a crumbling cliffside, you can't help but feel like it's something that should have been left to rot a long time ago. You're hit with a blast of dusty air as you step across the threshold and into the foyer. Everything in this room has been here for much longer than you've been alive, each object cemented in place with layers of dust and cobwebs. You can hear doors creak on their hinges, and the aches and moans of ancient floorboards as the house itself sways in the wind. Ooh, that wind sound was perfect. Welcome to our family's humble estate. Unfortunately, due to the current state of the house, only a few rooms will be safely accessible during your stay. I wouldn't go wandering around anywhere else if you have, if you value your limbs. The floors have been known to give out. If you know what's good for you, you'll stick to your room, your bathroom, and the kitchen. And the hallways, I guess. But only the hallways you need to use to get to those places. I'll show you around so you know where it's safe to walk. You can leave your bags here for the time being. It's beautiful. That... That's true, it is. The estate was the prized jewel of this region for a long time. It's it's quite magnificent. It's quite a magnificent piece of architecture even now. Shall we begin our tour? Follow me. You put your bags down and follow Tabitha through a long, dusty hallway. She delicately steps over holes and tears and tears in the floor, and you do your best to trace her steps. Kitchen. On Wednesday, a woman from town comes in and does cleaning. Her name is Janie. I wouldn't recommend socializing with her. She'll talk your ear off. If you need any food, there's fixings for peanut butter and jelly. Don't touch my mac and cheese or my ice cream. Those are off limits. Oh. And you can access the garden through here, but it's pretty wild, so I wouldn't if I were you. Explore some options for me even taking others. Someone cleans this place? Good God. I haven't, this, is this new? You said someone actually cleans this place? Have you ever actually seen that happen? Or does the person just say they did it and leave? It's nice. This is so nice. Okay, what's the difference? Oh my gosh. This is the type of thing that I overlook. I'm actually allergic to peanuts. Then I guess you'll be having plain old regular J's. Or you can deal with your own food while you're in town. I don't care which. Y'all, I... Fun fact, I, I don't know if this is, I think I told y'all this already. I was eating plain J's, like jam sandwiches, because I'm allergic to peanut butter as a child. And I think something with that um, has altered my brain chemistry. There, You should not just be eating plain old J's, bro. Okay. I don't know if I should, ex this is so nice. It's so much bigger than I'm used to in the city. Is that a kitchen island? It is. Thank you. Is there someone in town I can buy food? I might want to eat something other than jelly sandwiches this week. Is there somewhere in town we can get groceries? Well, aren't you fancy? Yeah, there's a general store. There's also a diner. 
I usually order my food in bulk online, though, so I wouldn't be going with you. Oh, I didn't actually budget for groceries this week. Is, is that- I don't know if she would take that. I think that sounds really sweet. Sweet, thanks. Cool, good talk. Can I- oh, Fru Fru, right? Is that the cat's name? What if I want ice cream? I think she would actually snap on me if I say that. Let me just be quiet. The way she be eating that isn't like banana flavored ice cream. She be cutting the fuck up. Bathroom. Follow me. Great. It's been hours since I've gone. As the two of you leave the kitchen, you pass by a tuxedo cat sitting on the countertop. Talk to animals. Approach the cat. Don't try to pet Fru Fru. If she wants to be pet, she'll let you know. Oh! <laughs> I don't want to talk. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I what? Oh. I don't want to say anything in front of um Tabitha. I don't know if this is a thing I have to keep under wraps or not. Clearly this is a cat that wishes to be left alone. You slowly back away. Come on, let's get back to the tour. You once again follow Tabitha through a long, dusty hallway. Maybe after a few nights it will get easier to navigate these spaces, but for the time being, you feel lucky to not have fallen through the floors. And guest bathroom. Not much to sew, it's a bathroom. I'll wait outside, do what you must if you must. Every time. Every time. There's just so much to unpack every time. Let's just- one more time, guys, for the- for the- why is there a plate in here? I didn't notice that there was a plate in here last time. Is Tabitha eating? She's eating and drinking in this bathroom, y'all. Is she okay? But, okay, if we actually look at this, like, from a- from an- from a- a deeper perspective, Tabitha has a problem. Like, her- she does not value the space she lives in, or she's depressed. I'm not gonna try to diagnose her or anything, but, like, you know, you know- I don't know. I don't, I have depression, y'all. I'm sorry, but sometimes I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave this here. I just I just don't have any energy to clean it up. So maybe that's why it's like this. Is Tabitha okay? Let's talk about Cuzzo. But this is nasty, though. This is this is really this is really diabolical. Um, I don't even know how some of these things could happen. Um, the the shower curtain is one of those that I I just. What's the point in having it at that point? You know what I mean? And then the toilet seat. How s are you slamming the lid? Are you taking aggressive poops like Sims do in Sims 4? And then, yeah, her being a fake blonde. I wonder what her real hair color is. It's actually so, like, why is she dying it blonde? Is there a reason? What's the, what's our hair color as a scarlet? Is there any scarlet distinguishing features? I want to know these things. And you should want to know too. It's a wretched bathroom. <laughs> wretched? Piles of <laughs> I'm sorry, wretched. Piles of junk sit untouched in the corners of the room, and mystery stains paint the floor. Ew. I just cringe in real life. I don't like how I said stains. I held on to it a little too long. Um. I'm gonna. I feel like this character. She would actually use it. She wants to. <laughs> I'm sorry. That is not what I thought was gonna happen. Scram, Bella, the chicks. <laughs> Not the roach. We can talk to the roach. I'm sorry, I'm yelling. Can we can talk to the roaches? They said scram, fella. The jig is up. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. This is real life. Bugs skitter from the bowl as you lift the seat. We are gonna use it. You gotta have the legs of steel. I know y'all. I I do squat everywhere. I can't use public restrooms. If I have to, I'ma just have to. My my legs is strong, y'all. A toilet is a toilet. Sure, it could be cleaner, but your business needs doing, and this is a good place as any. You do what you must and rejoin your cousin out in the hall. Next up, guest bedroom. Last stop on the tour, follow me. You and Tabitha briefly return to the foyer before climbing the stairs and reaching the guest room. The room smells old. Dust, mildew, wood rot. It has it all. A week of sleeping in this place might give you permanent lung damage. Damn. This is where you'll be staying. The linens are- why do I say it like that? The linens are fresh and I had Janie wash them last week. I had to endure half an hour rant about her kid to get her to do it, so you better be grateful. The closet is full of old family stuff, so you can't hang your clothes up, but you can use the dresser. It should be empty. This room is amazing. 
This is great, way nicer than what I'm used to. I can't say I'm surprised. Each and every piece of furniture in this room is a genuine antique handed down through the family for generations. This is not an Ikea bedroom or whatever such nonsense you're used to in the city. Who used to sleep here? When? This house is almost 150 years old. Many, many people have slept here. And now you'll sleep here, carrying on the fine tradition of bedrooms being slept in. I guess I'll start getting settled. Follow me, I'll take you back to the foyer and you can collect your belongings. This concludes our tour. I'm afraid I must return to my duties, so you'll have to entertain yourself for the rest of the day. Don't expect to see much of me. Tip, some dialogue options will open additional conversation paths. Some right way and others down the line. Right away and others down the line. Hey, is it cool if I bring someone over at some point this week? What? Um. Did I do something wrong? Hey, did I do something wrong? You asked me to come to this funeral, but since the moment I got here, you've been acting like I spat in your coffee. What's going on? Is it something I said? <sighs> okay, I'm sorry. I've been testy since you've gotten here. You've been fine. I'm just under a lot of pressure right now. Please just stay out of my hair until later, okay? I have work to do. What kind of work do you do? I run the coal mine, same as every Scarlet who came before me, except for you and your mom. Hold on. Y'all, I think I, I, theory alert, right? So, Perlan and our mom, sisters, maybe the reason Tabitha harbors a lot of resentment or just doesn't like us because it has something to do with the Scarlet curse. Maybe since our mom left, she would have been next in line to do whatever. Or un unless Tabitha's, well, yeah, it would have been our mom and then whoever's older, me or Tabitha, would have taken over. So basically, instead of it going down to each Scarlet, ma like the matriarchal line, it went to Tabitha instead. Like, it was supposed to go to our mom. If, like, our mom, but they seem to have died around the same time. I'm assuming Pearl Ann and our mother are the same age. So, like, do Scarlet's not live that long? Why did they die around the same time? And according to that one, I don't know. I don't want to spoil it because I don't know. I don't know if we've all played the game, but I don't know. Does that make sense to you guys? Maybe that's what it is. Except for you and your mom. And it requires a lot of time and concentration. So I'd appreciate it if you didn't keep me for long. Hashtag girl boss. Damn. I can't believe you're only in your 20s and you're already running a coal mine. Talk about hashtag girl boss. Don't patronize me. I know you have nothing to your name, Pyrus. Damn. Why did she just... I thought I was... I thought I was being supportive of our cousin. I won't keep you, but we should hang out when you get back. We'll see. There's a lot of things that need to get done this week. Your cousin leaves through the front door. Now it's just you. You in this sprawling, decrepit estate. Um, let's go settle into our room. Now that your cousin is gone, the aches and pains of your journey sink into your bones. You stumble back up the stairs to your room, suitcase in tow, eager to unwind before you face the rest of the day. You stand at the entrance to your room. Let's see. Check. Look out the window. You can only imagine how beautiful the garden must have been in its heyday. If you owned this place, you'd totally get out there with a shovel and some gardening gloves and whip it into shape. You'd go all out and pull weeds, chop trees, carve topperies, and do whatever you needed to do to return it to its former glory. And once it was all done, you'd sit by the fountain, which of course would have a little goldfish in it, and drink a floral tea while enjoying the bird song. Yeah, you'd definitely do that, just not right now. Is this, who is this? This must be an old relative of yours. Judging by the date of the inscription, you never heard of her, but you barely heard of anything about your aunt and cousin until a week ago, so it's not really a surprise. Maybe you could ask Tabitha about this Mary Bell Scarlet the next time you see her. That is, if she's actually in the mood for conversation. Let's see, let's check the closet. Okay, doll is still there. You can see your cousin set. You can see why your cousin said you should put your clothes in the dresser instead of this closet. There must be decades of family history stacked up in there. 
pick up the doll. Of course you're sharing your room with the creepy doll. You pick it up and examine it more closely. Its foot reads, property of Alexandra. No need to carry this around with you. You close the closet behind you. Put your clothes in the dresser. Oh, I honestly forgot about this little guy. You drag your suitcase over to the dresser and open up the bottom drawer. An opossum lurks within. It's quiet, but angry. Afraid. Oh. I friend. No hurt. Afraid. Um. What's your name, little guy? I'm Pyrus. Dustin. What are you doing in my drawers? Warm. Dark. Can you tell me about the human who lives here? Which human? Perlin died. Only one human lives here. Dustin not good with names. Two humans live here. Can you tell me about humans who lived here? One human, sad. One human, scary. The sad human. Can you tell me more about the sad human? Cries. Gives Dustin bad sleeps. The scary human always watches. Eyes hateful. Never mind. Thanks for the help, Dustin. Okay. <laughs> Bashing your clothes into a nest. You poor thing. You look cold in there. You gently lay your clothes on top of the creature, arranging them in a little nest. Dustin closes his mouth, somewhat more at ease than before, and looks up at you with his shiny black eyes. Human is kind to Dustin. Dustin will remember this. You close the drawer satisfied yourself wait what you close the drawer satisfied with yourself for a job well done um i don't think i'll take a nap it doesn't seem like there's much else to do from here right now let's see let's go bother frufru frufru hisses as you as you draw near and remains firmly in place you might want to talk to me wait is she french you might want to talk to me but i don't want to talk to you go away i have a terrible french accent i'm so sorry do you know what's in the sealed part of the estate nosy aren't you but of course i'm not surprised you seem to enjoy poking your head where it doesn't belong do you like living here i despise small talk can you tell me about tabitha this is the first time i've met her spare me your life story story tabitha at least knows not to bother me if you won't take a hint i suppose i have to take things into my own hands frou-frou lunges at your hand and bites you hard you back away Frufru, count your days. Count your days, ho. Finally, finally, you made it back to town. The holler, as that guy on the bus called it, it's probably seen better days. It still has a feeling of an idyllic country town, but the sidewalks are cracked and many of the storefronts are boarded up, their windows dusty with age. A chill breeze sweeps down the lane and you shudder, feeling as if you're peering into a grave. Gretchen, come back. You're bo quit bothering strangers. Here she go. Why, I do declare, who is this gorgeous stranger? Um, I haven't seen you around here before. Hot, the young woman is noticeably flustered by your appearance. It's a phenomenon that you, as a hot person, are all too familiar with. Sorry about Gretchen. She can be very slippery when she wants to be. Hope she didn't scare you. It's nice to meet you, Gretchen. I'm Pyrus. Oh my my, I can't remember the last time I met a newcomer who was so wonderfully polite. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Pyrus. Huh, that's a funny way to introduce yourself. I'm Stella. It's not very often I see a strange face up in the holler. Every now and then there's a new crop of coal folks, but you don't look dusty enough for that. You aren't in town for the funeral, are you? The Scarlet Funeral? Yeah, I am. I just got in town today. Wow, I didn't think there would be anyone else coming. Are you staying with Tabby? How's she holding up? Upon mentioning your cousin, Gretchen mutters under her breath. One of these days, I'll get that Tabitha to pet me. I haven't seen her since Perlane passed. Or for a while before that, now that I think about it. I'm sorry, did you say Tabby? I can't imagine Tabitha ever going by something so bubbly. She did back when I knew her better. It's been a while, but I hope she's okay. Um, I'm worried about her too. 
She's always been a little rough around the edges, but I figured she'd probably be having a rough go of things. She and her mom were really close. I think she's been up in that old mansion all by herself. It'll probably be good for her now that you're staying there, even if she doesn't think so herself. Are you two friends? I was probably closer than most people have gotten to being able to call her a friend. The school here is really small, so everyone had to go, had to at least get along with everyone else. She was a grade ahead of me, but everyone knew her, especially since she's a scarlet. We wound up bonding a bit when we both did- My lips are so ashy. <laughs> we, <laughs> we wound up bonding a bit when we were both in the school's production of A Midsummer's Night Dream. I was Puck and she was Mustard Seed. As you might have expected, she was more than prickly, but I managed to soften her up a bit in the end. But she graduated and that was that. I haven't seen that girl or her horrible cat since I was middle aged. Since it was middle aged? Oh, before it slips my mind, if you're staying in that spooky old mansion, you must have met Fru Fru. How does that monster fare? Oh my god. Wait, wait, I had to hide it? Okay, hold on. I didn't know I actually had to. Wait, okay, who was the last person that talked? Okay, no, that's not it. Oh, that was Gretchen who said that. Okay. Should I answer? I feel like we should we should we should keep it on under wraps, y'all. We can't just be like talking to Gretchen. I thought I want to talk to Gretchen. I'm gonna talk to Gretchen. Ugh, Tabitha's cat. Unfortunately we've met. Fufu was so condescending. Wait, what? Are you messing with me? You can't actually talk to my dog, right? Oh. oh sorry, it's a joke. I'm just, I just... I, I can't talk to animals, actually. Yeah, of course. That'd be ridiculous. You and Stella maintain awkward eye contact. <laughs> the hot ones are always weird. Well, next time you see that devil, please send my regards and do let her know that... Not only do I still draw breath, but I very much still plan to outlive her. Oh, if, if you just got into town, you must be starving. I was just on my way to the diner for a coffee, and they've got amazing biscuits. My treat. I like how we don't have a choice but to get into some myth. I'll play, I didn't- I never noticed this fella back here. I know this food. Bites. <coughs> he back there. He, he back there. Two kids. This is his main source of income. He might not have a couple of teeth, but that motherfucking food gonna be good. That's, that food right there gonna slap. We got that baby eating it. That food good. The pleasant aroma of greasy breakfast food hangs heavy in the air. In contrast with the empty, lifeless atmosphere of the family estate, the diner is filled with the comforting din of hum comforting din or din of human life. All of which grinds to a sudden halt as the patrons realize that a stranger has entered the establishment. Hello. It's me, your boy. I'm just in town for the funeral. It's nice to meet y'all. The woman behind the counter beams back at you. Hello there and welcome to the holler. You just let us know if you need anything, okay? You nod politely, giving a small wave as you and Stella slide into the nearest booth. Looks like you'll probably be the talk of the town for a while. It's not often folks around here meet many strangers, and with who you're related to, well, folks love their gossip, you know? Oh my god, Avery. <laughs> Lord, Avery. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna cry. Hey Stella, I went ahead and fixed you up a coffee. They grace gracefully place a cup of specially brewed coffee in front of Stella. Oh shucks, thanks Avery. And here's some bacon for the little lady. For me? For me? Gretchen sniffs at the bacon and digs in. Tip, you can hit the H button. Oh, I know that. Look how cute. Oh, Gretchen. Anything for you, darling? I would've, right there, I would've folded like a damn lawn chair if Avery called me darling. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, I'm about to bust. <laughs> um, order biscuit and a coffee. Can I have a biscuit and coffee, please? I heard they're really good. Best in the co county. Avery pours the fragrant brew into the empty mug in front of you. 
They linger off after pouring your coffee, turning to you nervously. Oh, and uh, I'm sorry for your loss. Before you have a chance to respond, they're gone. Glad you took my advice with the biscuit. You won't regret it. Anyways, the funeral is not till Sunday, right? That gives you a bit of time to stumble around town. I'm trying to think if there are any cool events going on this week. There's always the reading adventure at the library, which is supposed to be for kids, but I do it every month anyway. Oh, and I'm pretty sure Avery's throwing a party Saturday night. I cannot wait for the party episode to drop. Oh my god. Can they please let me choose my outfit? Please let me choose my outfit. Please, I beg of you. Let me choose. And there's the weekly Sunday potluck. That too. That should be right after the funeral too, so it'll be a special occasion. Is the potluck like a church thing? Would it be weird for me to come if I'm not a member? No, no. The Sunday thing is coincidental. It's actually hosted by the library. Um, not too many people go to the church around here, if I'm being honest. A non-religious community in the rural south? That's crazy! That's gotta be unusual. I know, I know. We must seem like such heathens. Why does she do that look? I'm telling you, it reminds me when Francine was like... Like when she was pretending to be a pig or something? I don't know. But there's plenty of God-fearing folks in town. They just aren't the biggest fans of the local church. Well, the building's okay, but the pastor's another story. There's just something a little off about that guy. You'll get what I mean if you ever meet him. And unfortunately, you probably will. Anyway, those are all the big events I can think of. As for the day-to-day, -day, any idea how you want to kill time for the rest of the week? Um, I'll probably just do what I can to support Tabitha through this. I kind of assumed I'd be spending my time trying to help Tabitha, but with how quickly she ran off today, I'm not sure that's enough for a full schedule. That's really sweet of you. But you're right, that'll definitely still leave you with plenty of time to kill. Have you thought about exploring the local trails at all? I'm usually out there a few nights a week for my job. I'd be happy to show you around. Before Stella can finish, Avery returns biscuit and toe. Is there nothing else coming for me? Gosh, if I had known that plate of bacon would be my main and only course, I would have waited before digging in. Here's your biscuit. Winnie says it's on the house. She sends her condolences. Thanks, it looks great. Thanks, Avery. It looks great. You pick up the biscuit. It's delicate and fluffy and nearly crumbles at your tongue. I'm hungry, y'all. Y'all, I have like a stomach virus and I am so hungry. I have been eating saltine crackers all day. <laughs> help. Send help. It nearly crumbles at your touch. Buttery warmth emanates from the surface. You take a bite and it melts into your mouth. As I'm sorry, I'm, reading, I'm hungry, y'all. As if it was nothing but butter suspense in a thin matrix of dough. Truly, this is the perfect biscuit. <laughs> it's good, but I've had no. Go. Did I go all the way back because I clicked the wrong option? Yes, I did. Yes, I did, and I'm not ashamed about it at all. Whoa, this is a really good biscuit. Wow. I'm glad you like it. Avery lingers at the table for a moment. So, has Stella mentioned she's famous? <laughs> oh, Avery, I'm not famous. Look, if you're not gonna go around tooting your own horn, you know I'm gonna do it for you. Stella sighs. I'm a YouTuber. Oh, that's really rad. I never met a YouTuber before. I'd love to check out your channel some point. Oh, thanks, it's nothing much. It pays the bills, but mostly, but it's mostly a passing project, you know? She's selling herself short here, Pyrus. Her stuff is amazing. She hunts cryptids. I think the best video to start would be that river one. Not the lake, but you know, the controversial one. Oh yeah, the Katab... I can never say this. What the Katabwa River Runner. Katabawa? Katabwa? Katabwa? Let me stop. Yeah, the Katabwa River Runner. I didn't expect much of that footage at the time, but it wound up being my most popular video so far. So the river runner is a cryptid that's only known from a single sighting. Two boy scouts thought they saw something big and weird on the Katabawa River, and that's all I had to go on. But then I wound up catching this on camera. Stella pulls out her phone and shows you a clip of something in the river. Folks said it was a beaver, but if that was the case, it'd at least be twice the size of any beaver I'd seen. 
I also had people saying it's a dog or even a capybara that must have escaped from a local wildlife sanctuary. It was a mountain lion. I could smell it stink from miles away. I'm still not sure what it was. And I'm the only one who saw the thing with my own two eyes. It's a mountain lion. You decided to take Gretchen's word for it. I think it's a mountain lion. You can make out its little kitty cat ears. No, no way. It's absolutely not a mountain lion. There are no mountain lions this far east. I did a whole video on the Appalachian mountain lion myth and found Jack's squad. And there's no reason one would be swimming in the river like this. They're not a fan of water. And it's too short to be a mountain lion. No way. Personally, I'm a fan of the capybara theory. Sure, it's not like any local sanctuaries are missing one, but there's always people keeping exotic pets as animals. Pets as animals. Animals as pets. Kind of surrogator type situation. Exactly. Some exotic pet owner set it free and now will forever roam the catabola, confusing Boy Scouts and YouTuber commentators for years to come. So, speaking of things to do around town, I'm actually planning on filming this week's video tonight. I was wondering if you maybe want to come along? It's a pretty easy one this week. We wouldn't even have to camp anywhere. I'm gonna go after the... Wait, no spoilers. Oh, sorry, Avery. It's okay, I should probably get back in, back to it instead of standing around chatting with friends. I'll see you around. Now that the coast is clear, I'm going after Skunk Ape. Heck yeah. Skunk Ape was hilarious. I saw a docu special on that one. Stinky Bigfoot. Right? I thought it'd be pretty fun video. It's hard to be serious when you're talking about something that's famous or smelling bad. Most skunk ape sightings are from Florida, but while I was doing research for last week's video, I came across a report where a lady from a town over claimed to have seen one on her deck playing tug of war with her dog. You take, if I open my my door and I see my dog playing with a skunk ape, I'm a, I'm a, oh, I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry because I don't know how I'm gonna get him. I don't know how I'm gonna get them. I don't know how I'm gonna survive that situation. I know I actually do. I think I would beat Skunk Ape's ass if it tried to eat my dog or play tug of war with him. I think I would. I think I would have the strength to do it. As I leave no, no stone unturned, I decided it was worth investigating. So what do you say? You wanna tag along? Hold the camera for me while I narrate against the darkening sky, that sort of thing. Are you, ooh, let me not talk to them. Against my better judgment, yes. I will follow a girl I just met into the woods at night to chase after a dangerous beast. It sounds fun. When you put it that way, it sure does sound like this is a bad idea, but trust me, we'll have a great time. We'll have a great time. It's been a while since I had anyone besides Gretchen out there with me, so this is going to be a lot of fun. I actually started the channel with a couple of buddies of mine back in high middle school, so it's kind of a blast from the past. Me and Kanika and Reese were running around in the woods flipping over rocks and bothering salamanders. Our videos were terrible, but we had a lot of fun. And that's all that mattered to us. You know, this gets me thinking, I wonder if they'd be down to come along with us. Get the old group back together. Though I guess Kanika has to close the general store tonight, so I'm pretty sure she hasn't. She's a no-go. But Reese, I think there's a decent chance we could get him to come out of his hidey hole if he's up for it. Do you mind if I make a quick call? Girl, you didn't give me a chance to answer. I won't say I do mind. Stella pulls out her phone and dials it, waiting while it rings. Reese, dude, what's up? It's feel like it's been forever. Oh, man, I'm sorry to hear that. Do you want me to come by? Or... Oh, okay. If you're really sure, but if you change your mind. Oh, um, I, I was just calling to see if you wanted to come out to the woods tonight. I met someone cool in town today. She's Tabitha's cousin. I know, yeah, just here for the week. Anyway, we're going to look for Skunk Ape. We could take the easier trails, if that would help. Dang, man. That sounds awful. I hope you take it easy tonight. I'll swing by sometime this week and we can have a more low-key hang. How's that? Yeah, I'll bring her. Talk to you soon. Bye, bud. Reese. Oh, Reese. There's always been something off about that boy. I never liked the smell of him. Looks like it's just you and me, pal. Did he ask you to bring me to his house? Why? He's excited to meet you, of course. I think you'll find most folks... <laughs> He's excited to meet you, of course. I think you'll find most folks in town are. Are you okay? Me? Yeah, I'm more worried about Reese. He has... He's had a lot going on in the past. 
gosh, 10 years or so. But I feel like it's gotten a lot worse recently. I can't remember the last time I saw him leave the house. Oh, well, it's really not my place to talk about it, really. I just got a little excited thinking about having him along again. He's hilarious. You'd love him. We should swing by his place sometime this week. That'd be nice. I'd love to meet your friends. Awesome. I'll make it happen. He's definitely the trickier one to meet. Kanika is much easier to track down since she's at the general store basically every day. But friendship can wait. We got a skunk ape to go hunt. So we should probably head out if you want to make it up the mountain before it's too dark. Come on, let's blow this popsicle stand. You pause before getting up. Maybe it's time to make a good first impression. Leave a generous tip. You reach into your pocket and pull out a crumbled $5 bill. You know it's a bit more than one would expect from such a short dining experience, but you might as well share the wealth while you got it. I would never choose the option where I ain't got no money. Like, why would I want to have no money in the game, too? Are y'all having a good time? I just want to make sure. Just a little check-in. How are y'all enjoying this? Oh, I did never notice that, y'all. Okay, look in the top left. The Holler Estate is right there. It really does just... Oh, that would. That's a long-ass walk. Good God. Hmm. That's crazy. That's a crazy build. It's gonna... It's gonna fall. Like, that's... Like, that is insane. It hadn't been very it hadn't been very cold when you first arrived in town, but as the sun dips closer and closer to the horizon, a chill descends upon the hollow. You see your situation with renewed clarity. You're in a new place, far from civilization and the people you know, following someone you just met into a dark forest in search of monsters. You feel How would my character feel? Okay, so like I'm just trying to think. How would she feel? She lives in an apartment. She ha she things aren't really going well. Her cousin's really not fucking with her. I feel like she'll be excited. I really I genuinely feel like she'd be like, oh, this is this is a bla I'm having a blast. You feel alive. The fall breeze passing through the leaves, the orange hue of the setting sun painting the horizon, the promise of excitement ahead. It's been a while since you felt this in the moment, this present. The world around you feels almost magical. Or a magical or a mythical creature to actually manifest in front of you, it would fit perfectly in this world. Gotta love this first fall weather. This past summer was the hottest on record, since last year at least. You know how it is these days. Each summer is hottest yet until the next summer, which always finds a way to be so much worse. Any Texans out there? It is hot as hell. Is it still spring, y'all? It's hot. I'm so hot. I walk outside. I walk outside to take out the trash. I come back in, I'm drenched. I'm drenched. I'm it's just too hot. It's hot, okay? It's just nice to feel a chill in the air and see the leaves change. Like normalcy is restored, if only for a moment. Sorry if that was a bit of a bummer. We should talk about something more fun, like skunk apes. Do you ever hunt things that aren't cryptids, like ghosts and whatnot? Yeah, for sure. I used to go after all sorts of spooky stuff. I never had much luck though, especially when it came to ghosts. Back when I first started doing excuse me. Back when I first started doing solo videos, I'd go into all sorts of old and abandoned buildings, hoping I'd stumble across some sort of activity. But then nothing ever happened. It was always just me and that camera in an old house getting worked up over gusts of wind and creaky floorboard. When all said and done, I've just been luckier with cryptids. I want to believe in ghosts so bad though. And I can't rule out the possibility that there really are true hauntings out there. But if there are, I sure as heck haven't seen any myself. Werewolves are kind of lumped in with crypt cryptids. I'd be shocked if there were actually people out there who turned into animals, but werewolf lore lines up pretty well with great beast genre of cryptid. As for demons, I don't know. I honestly don't even want to consider the possibility that they exist. Because if they really are out there, then jeez, a lot of folks are doomed to an eternity of flames. Let's hope all that junk is just bunk. Am I right? What about aliens? Don't even get me started. Do you see those UFO videos these governments declassified? Aliens are definitely real, and they have absolutely visited Earth. Like, I believe in aliens way more than I believe in cryptids. Y'all, I believe in aliens. And I want them to come get me. Especially if they look like Garrus Vakarian and Jaw from Mass Effect. I want to be picked up, scooped up, like, come get me right now. And I'm sorry... Oh my gosh, if a sorry or real, come pick me, I'm fine. 
I'll be okay. I won't even say anything, y'all. I will be, I will just live in space. I adore my darling Stella, but she gets the strangest ideas in her head these days. Ever since her parents went away, she's been more and more foolhardy with the critter nonsense. You don't see me haunting alien, hunting aliens out here because we know they're real. I believe in aliens. Heck yeah, they're real. Nice to know. I knew we had a connection. I know somebody who knows somebody who heard a story from his trucker in Fayetteville. His truck stopped in the middle of the road, just shut down completely, even though he had a full tank of gas. And suddenly it looked like daylight outside. He could see cows out in the field, birds in the sky, then this metallic, like, egg thingy appeared floating in front of his truck. He passed out, and when he woke up, he was missing his pinkies. It was like he'd never even, they'd never been there. It was just smooth skin where pinkies should be. I know it's a secondhand source, but there's plenty more like it if they are true. Could have been the government. I'm convinced. Makes sense to me, for sure. Even if it's, even if this one's hogwash, there's a lot of evidence out there. Let's move on. Oh. Did you hear that? Oh, calm down, Gretchen, you old mutt. Oh, Duke, you rascal. Same to you, Stella. You're always jumping at nothing, girl. I'm sorry for getting spooked, Duke. I thought you were some creature of the darkness. Nah, girl, you're just old Duke. Now what the hell you looking for out here? Skunk ape? Sorry, I asked. And who's this you suckered into coming with you? Wait a tick, aren't you? Is that? Yep. I see. Welcome to the holler. My condolences, I'll keep you in my prayers. Now both of y'all head back to town, you hear? It's best we steer clear of this area tonight. I'm out here dealing with my own critter, and I won't be too appreciative of a couple fools with a camera scare away more sensitive wildlife. What are you hunting tonight? Something tall and hairy? Something musky? You seen anything like that recently? Wouldn't you like to know? You never could stay in your business, Stella Richmond. Put that damn camera down. Aw, oh, come on, Duke. Maybe I could help out. I'm pretty good at tracking. You know I learned from the best. That you did. But I have yet to see a shred of proof you listened to any of it. The way you tromp around these woods at night yelling about chunk of bungas or whatever have you. <laughs> Something's been getting at my chickens. I've lost three this week. I can't afford to lose any more than that. I'm sorry to hear that. But huh, I wonder if Skunk Ape has a taste for chicken. Now see, this is why I don't come to you about these things. Ain't no Skunk Ape, whatever the hell that is. I know exactly what it is, but I know you won't believe me if I tell you. Oh, don't, Duke, you don't think it's... I do, actually. It's those damn mountain lions. They're out here, Stella. I don't care what your little investigation turned up. You haven't been out in these woods as long as I have. Those sons of bitches are sneaky. And of course you wouldn't find any in one night of tracking. And I know for a fact that's what's been getting at my chickens. It couldn't have been anything else. I'm telling you. Man, mountain lions are extinct in these parts. There hasn't been an actual sighting since the 1990s, and even those were iffy. It's true, there are mountain lions out here, sure as sin. They appear on all the best trees. I can't believe you go out here on your YouTube saying some river monster spotted by a couple school-aged boy scouts has been 100% confirmed, yet Appalachian cougars are some sort of far-fetched fantasy made by geezers like me. You made me look like a fool. I read those comments people were posting on your video. They were calling me all kinds of names, just for seeing things with my own eyes that I know to be true. I'm sorry, Duke. I didn't mean to sick anybody on you. I just don't think it's possible. You'll eat the words when it come carrying a mountain lion corpse out of the woods at dawn. And if you don't, and if you two don't want a face full of buckshot, I suggest you run home and stay out of the woods tonight. Just wasting our time. Just give us one night out here to see what we can find, and I'm sure we can get to the bottom of this footage of a raccoon and claim it's a here for unknown creature that's heat ray vision or some such nonsense i know what i'm looking for and there's no way i'm backing down but i've got a film tonight the video needs to be out by tomorrow evening so i can keep up on schedule if i miss an update i might lose my new sponsor and who knows what that'll mean for my career you ain't the only one on the schedule as you well know my boy Bo and me are headed to the state fair to show off big betty We'll be going on near a week, 
We'll be gone near a whole week, so our chicken coop might as well have a big all-you-can-eat sign on it. You know how I feel about my chickens. I couldn't take it if I lost any more of my little ladies. Let's just go, Stella. He's not gonna budge. You're right, no point in losing any more time arguing. Fine, we'll head back to town. Break a leg out here, dude. Break a what now? It means good luck, old man. Alright, have a nice night, y'all. And this is where, this is where it happens. This is where I start to dislike Miss Stella Richmond. Because why the hell didn't we leave the woods? When this man said, I'm going to be in here shooting. I'm going to be in here shooting at shit. That's literally what he just told us. He's just going to shoot at shit. All night. Why would he want to be in the woods with him? As you and Stella return to the trail, she carefully looks back the way you came. Okay, coast is clear. There's no way we're letting Duke edge us out that easy. Come on, I know a little trail that'll get us around him. Um, no, we aren't. No way, not with Duke and his shotgun out here waiting to blow our heads off. I like my head intact. Not blown to pieces, thank you very much. Oh my god, I keep clicking that. While well, I understand your fear, Pyrus, this is an opportunity to, for a once-in-a-lifetime adventure. Seize it while you can. Oh, you don't have to worry about Duke. I've been out tracking with him before. The man sounds like a truck crashing through the woods, tra crashing through the trees when he walks. Even if we do cross paths, we'll hear him long before he catches wind of us. There's no shaking you, is there? Oh, fine, there's no shaking you, is there? You'll just follow me until I finally relent and go monster hunting with you. I promise it'll be fun and safe. The trail is just up the way. Let's go. Famous last words. All right, this looks like a good shot. Mind holding the camera? She hands you the camera and takes position. Hot. Okay. Me. <clears throat> As night falls, my new assistant, the gorgeous Pyrus, and I find ourselves on a high hill in the Blue Ridge Mountains, where we'll begin our hunt for the elusive yet pungent skunk ape. Though mostly encountered in Florida, this possible relative of Bigfoot has been spotted all along the southern, southern, southeastern edge of the United States, including right in this very county. Dang, I can't read. Here's to hoping we get a glimpse tonight. We'll check back once we're on the trail. Until then, stay searching, Stellars. And keep digging, Gretches. Is Gretchen, oh my gosh. Is Gretchen like popular? Like if there's a dog watching the channel, are they like, yeah, I'm watching it from this Gretchen. I can take that camera off your hands now. We'll be able to start the tracking scene once the sun sets all the way. In the meantime, we got to take in all this gorgeous scenery. It's breathtaking. And the air is so clean and fresh, I feel like I'm breathing for the first time. It is. I'm glad you're out here. Gretchen has no appreciation for beautiful mountain vistas. And it gets old saying wow into the empty expanse every time I come out here. It's nice to some have someone to say wow with. Your mo quiet moment with Stella is broken by a loud, percussive snort. Remain silent. Did you hear that? That's the sound deer make when they want to warn the rest of their herd about big scary predators, like us. Let's check it out. As you and Stella hear the footfalls of animals retreating into the woods, she reaches for her flashlight. A single deer remains behind, staring down the beam of light while Gretchen whines and pulls at her harness. Pain. Rot. Decay. A deer! A deer! Let me at him! How dare he infringe upon my dearest Stella personal space! Let me at him! And then it's gone. Jeez, Gretchen, calm down. You're gonna hurt yourself. Oh my, it seems I was consumed by a blinding rage. That was so very unladylike. What must you think of me? She cannot handle deer. When she gets like this, I usually have to pick her and hold, pick her up and hold her. She has a bad habit of slipping her harness when she wants to go after something. You're too much of a potato, and they don't make harnesses to fit potatoes, do they? I think that deer was threatening us. Or warning us. I think it was just sick. 
a thing on his face. I bet it was an abscess, maybe a tumor. It's not like wild animals can get those taken care of, the care of, so they just get bigger and bigger. And poor thing, there's not much we can do about it. It's never too late to turn back. I don't actually think I'm really cut out for this sort of thing. Those deer genuinely spooked me. I don't know if you want me weighing you down. Don't be so hard on yourself. You just aren't accustomed to the sounds of the forest yet. When you go off on your first few night hikes, everything sounds like some horrible monster that's just waiting for an opportunity to shred you to bits, but eventually you realize it's mostly just deers and raccoons, which probably won't go after you. Here, let's take a quick snack break before we get to the night's activities. Maybe some food will help settle your nerves. As you settle down to rest, Stella breaks open a bag of assorted snacks. Unfortunately, it looks like there isn't peanuts in the trail mix. I'm allergic to peanuts. Oh, yikes. I'm so sorry. There are only peanuts in the trail mix, but I totally get it if everything being in my pack makes things a little much for you. I'll be sure to keep that in mind for the future. Um, take the, take the dried apricots. You grab a handful of dried apricots. I actually dried these myself. I wound up getting a bunch of apricots from a free, for free from Janie a while back. I didn't know what else to do with them. It's wild how easy it is to make your own dry fruit. That's neat. Thanks, Stella. Anytime. And as long as you're in town, don't worry about food. I've got you covered. You and Stella settle down on an overlook, snacks in hand, and the quiet sounds of evening wildlife wash over you. Gretchen gnaws a stick, distracted for the time being. So, tell me what it's like in Anju. Do you have a house? An apartment? Do you live with a family? Roommates? Pets? Tell me what it's like to be you. I live in an apartment with a difficult roommate. I didn't find this guy, an old roommate of mine had him move in. Then he just left and just stuck him with me. He sleeps on the couch in the common area most nights, always unclothed. He steals bites of my food, which he thinks he's being really sneaky about, but there's really nothing sneaky about taking a huge bite out of a freshly made sandwich when there's only two of us living there, even if I'm in the other room when it happens. And he infringes on my privacy all the time. If I close the door to my room, he'll just start screaming and sometimes even attack the door until I open it and just walk away. It's like he has a complex about closed doors. Which of course also means he doesn't close the door when he's doing his business. Almost like he wants me to watch him. And ugh, at least once a week he somehow misses and leaves a big pee puddle, which I always end up stepping in. It's gotten to the point that I think he's causing lasting damage to the house, and no matter what I say or do, it doesn't get him to get through to him. Anyways, um, sorry for the rant, but I could go on for hours about this guy. I mean, he's a cat, yeah, but he's particular- he's a part- This word right here is my kryptonite. Is a particularly horrible cat, and it's not like I can just give him away or anything. That would be cruel. Wait, he's a cat? Like an animal? Yeah, his name is Truck. I'm terrified I won't get my security deposit back because of what he's done to the place. So, what do you do for a living? Ooh, I don't even know. I don't know what I said last time. But I'm going to make her a streamer so her and Stella have a, something in common. Oh, no way. A fellow content creator. That's awesome. I knew we had a lot in common. What sort of streams do you do? Um, I teach people how to cook. This is what we're doing here. Oh wait, wait, so if we click this, does this mean we're like a foodie? Wait, I do art, that's kind of cool. I do art on stream, sometimes it's a project I've been working on for a while. I wish I could draw y'all. Y'all will be having ideas of what things like to draw, but I can't draw, <laughs> it's so bad. I gotta show y'all some of the things I've drawn before one time, one day, dang. I've been working on for a while and sometimes it's just me taking requests for a few hours. That's incredible. I've always wanted to be good at art, but it's one of those talents that's never really manifested for me. Try as I might. I'll have to check out your channel sometime this week. How do you like it? Um, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Most people I meet tend to raise their eyebrows when I tell them what I do, but I love it. It might not be much, but it makes me feel like I'm taking control of my own destiny. Believe me, I can relate. I don't think I'd give up what I do for anything. 
A crisp breeze passes over you. What about you? What's your living situation? Gretchen and I live in a little house just outside of town. It's actually the house I grew up in, so it has a lot of pleasant memories attached to it. And I'm glad I could keep it in the family. My great-grandfather built that house. And must have done a great job because it's just as sturdy as it's ever been. Do you live alone? There? Yeah. The place used to belong to my parents, but they're not around anymore. And the holler's small enough place that other folks don't need roommates. Oh. Jeez, I'm so sorry. It's okay, you didn't know. And I've done my morning. You don't have to watch your tongue around me or anything. Life goes on. What were they like? Did you two get- did y'all get along? Oh, I just hit this. They were amazing. Two of the nicest people you'd ever meet, and interesting too. My dad was a bit of a regional legend among hunters and trappers, but he was always out in the woods on the trail or something. And he certainly had some interesting- we certainly had some interesting dinners because of him. He had to learn how to fend for himself, you see, since his family didn't have much growing up. So he learned how to hunt and trap and got damn good at it. He always made sure I had food and that I knew how to get it if I ever found myself too far from a grocery store. I could make us a pretty good salad with just what's in this clearing if I had to, though it wouldn't taste exactly free. As for my mom, she was a saint. She was a local vet, the lady of all the farms in the county knew to call if their animals were in need of something. She was smart as a whip and strong to boot. Turns out pulling calves out of a 1,600 pound cow all day is a great way to build mu muscle. My god. She was smart as a whip and strong to boot. Turns out pulling calves out of a 1,600 pound cow all day is a great way to build muscle. But she was gentle too. Even the smallest mouse would get the proper care in her hands. I'm sure she's most of the reason Gretchen here is one of the oldest doggers I've ever met. But yeah, those are my parents. No need to overshare, I'm sorry. I can relate, my mom died pretty recently, so I get it. It's alright if you ever need to talk about things. Oh thanks, that's actually really sweet of you. How are you holding up? Um, how is our character doing? Is she actually really sad about her mom passing away? I feel like she should be the one Scarlet that actually likes her mom, so terribly, to be honest. It wasn't a quick death, it took years, to the point that it was almost a relief when it finally happened. But then it sank in that she was really gone and I was utterly alone. And then the hospital bill started to come in, so yeah, I'm not taking it well. I can't even imagine how bad that must be. It's just salt in the wound at that point. Girl, what kind of shoes are those? Nike. Whoa. My stars, what was that? Stella immediately packs her bag and slings it over her shoulder. Please tell me that was a raccoon. Or something. Or something, yeah. Whatever made that sound, I haven't heard anything like it. And it's close. Here, hold Gretchen's lease for me and let's check this out. Gretchen, don't be doing nothing crazy, girl. You and Stella inch towards the tree line as she shines her flashlight into the woods. Do stay close, Pyrus. I wouldn't want any harm to befall you. Talk to animals. As you approach, a series of weak clucks call out from a nearby bush. Pain. It's all pain. Maybe Duke's birds weren't eaten after all. Girl, what the- what? Hold on, y'all. I honestly missed that. I blinked. What the- What the hell was that? Hold on, I gotta play that back. Holy shit. I'm guessing it must be maybe two, three feet tall? It doesn't look hairy either, so I think we can rule out Skunk Ape. But whatever it is, it has one of Duke's chickens. And it looks like it's headed north. Let's go after it. I was on board with the whole thing. Do, do we have to? Now is not the time to hesitate. If we're catching this thing, we gotta go now. Stella sprints into the woods in pursuit, leaving you no choice but to run after her. Gretchen excitedly pulling you along by her leash. I forgot this girl falls. <laughs> Why did she eat shit? Like, please, Stella, get up. Stella, my darling companion, are you alright? Ooh. 
Are you okay? Yeah, I'm alright. I just tripped on something weird. Oh no, that poor thing. It must be one of Duke's. Oh, Jesus, it's still alive. Investigate the chicken. You move towards Stella to get a closer look at the chicken. Don't let Gretchen get too close. She'll try to bite, take a bite if you don't stop her. I would never. Something about this bird just doesn't smell right. You hold Gretchen's leash close to your chest. She squirms against her harness. Examine that. Ew, ew, good God. At first you thought it might have been a tumor, but this is something else. The skin is stretched taut. The growth pulsing beneath. The head? Why am I alive? Its poor little chicken eyes look up at you glazed over and still rolling around in their sockets with unfortunate life. Looks like this is what Stella slipped on. Its wing is barely still attached, but that seems to be the least of this chicken's concerns. Having investigated it to your heart's content, you give away to Stella. Ste you give Stella room to film, excuse me. <clears throat> it seems we found one of Duke's chickens, folks, and he's not looking good. I'm hesitant to speculate, but she definitely seems to have some sort of growth under her skin. Could be a tumor, could be something else. Either way, I don't think there's much that can be done for her at this point. Oh, jeez, I'm gonna have to put a massive content warning up for this video. Do you hear that? What was that? There's something out there all around us. I can smell it. There's so many of them. What in Sam hell are you two doing out here? Did I tell you to... Birdie? Oh, Birdie, what's wrong, darling? Good God. Did you see what got to her? No, but... I'm pretty sure we can hear them. We didn't see whatever did this to your bird, but I think we can hear them right now. Ah, oh, don't tell me you're caught up in Stella's nonsense. Wait. Is this like a... So you know how like... Oh god, I don't want to spoil it. Spoilers. You know how in each episode we find a Scarlet like... Not even Scarlet related, but one of those little... Thingies that make the Scarlets pass out or whatever. It's just like a, a relic. I'll say relic. Is this one of these moments? Like, these whispers are very similar to how, what you hear when you see those, I think. Duke, I'm so sorry. We were on the trail when we found her like this that camera away for god's sakes girl i don't want to be in another video of yours no one needs to see me like this no one needs to see birdie like this you wouldn't put her online would you not when she's like this all swollen and hurting dude did you hear what she said i think they're coming closer you stay away from my stella you mongrels come out you sons of bitches dude don't shoot them we have no idea what will happen you hear that, Stella? That ain't the sound of something peace-like. Whatever these things are, they'll pay for what they did to my girls. Come on, you. Whatever your name is, grab that flashlight and help me line up a good shot. I can feel the white-hot rage from earlier start to wash back over me. I'm going after them. As the creatures in the tree line grow louder and more numerous, Gretchen violently strains against her harness. Quick, they're closing in on us. Y'all know I could never let anything happen to Gretchen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is just going to be my canon. I'm sorry. You know, this is what this is. We're reestablishing our canon timeline. Because I lost the saves. It's fine now. Bad repression. Ooh, brother. Ooh. Brother Uva is there. You dive forward and scoop Gretchen into your arms just before she manages to wiggle out of her harness. You, your eyes fixate on the dark tree line over Duke's shoulders. God damn it! <gasps> I forgot that he shot himself. Make himself. You hear a body hit the ground, and then it quiets as the chaos fades and the sound of nature creeps back in. Gretchen? Pirates? Duke, are you alright? No. Just a little shaken up. Same. What happened? Did I lose myself again? I apologize for being so easily shaken up. I'll do better. 
Gretchen, here, I'll take her. My poor little pup, thanks for watching her. D Duke, are you okay? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, Duke. Holy shit. What, what do we do now? What the hell are we supposed to do? Stand stunned in silence. You stand stunned in silence. You've seen dead people before. But never like this. Those things are still out here. What happened to Duke? Is something wrong with him? Why won't he get up? Yeah, yeah, this is a lot. We're in way over our heads. Let me just check the camera real quick. Christ, this footage is so dark and shaky. Okay, look. Yeah, I'm sorry. Y'all know I have to... <laughs> Every time. Let me take a sip. Let me take a sip of my drink. Every time I come back to this, I am stunned by the... Now we know why Stella was so unfazed when it came to seeing Duke's death. Because of the horror that she went through. But it's so crazy. Like... She sees Duke, and she's like, okay, is my footage okay? I'm like, girl, what? She's so detached from, like, death. It's crazy. Like, that is a crazy character trait. Not even crazy. Not crazy as in, like, I gotta stop using that word, but it's just a interesting character trait. Look, I hate to say this, but people need to know what happened here. Duke's family deserves closure. Other people deserve to know what's out here. We need more footage. Come on, let's go after them before we lose our chance. I don't think, I think my character would probably be traumatized. Like, I don't think she would, I think she would go along with it solely because, like, she just saw this. She shook, but I think I want to see the contrast. Like, my character shook and Stella's is like, um, okay, what's next? I think I'm just going to have her silently follow. You silently nod as your eyes meet Stella's. And I don't think I've ever seen what happens when you go forward, too. So that's kind of why I want to keep going. This might be a bad idea, but it's your and Stella's bad idea to make. It looks like Duke managed to tag one of them before he, you know. We should be able to follow that blood trail. Let's go while it's still fresh. As you and Stella push through the woods, the unearthly sounds once again surround you. Keep running, girl. Pillsbury Doughboys in the tree. God, they're everywhere. I smell something terribly foul, like a, a pile of rancid meat. I think we're almost there. The trees are thinning out. Mountain lion. It looks like at least. So what I'm assuming is they just put their baby, quote unquote, babies in here and then they grow. And then this is how many of those Pillsbury Doughboys are out here and will be born. So they're just like decimating the wildlife. The shrieks pull back into a steady whisper as you and Stella stumble upon the putrid bodies of dozens of dead and dying animals. A sinking realization pulls at your gut. This is their nest and you are surrounded is this horrible place we need to get out of here more of those swellings all the animals here have them or had them why aren't they attacking us i have no idea but i think we had enough footage let's get the hell away from this nest before they change their tune why don't they attack it didn't attack Duke. It looked like Duke just got scared by it. It got closer to Duke. I don't know. Just as you follow Stella in the mad dash through the woods, so to do, so to do the unearthly hollows and whispers of the nest. In the what? Oh my gosh. Just as you follow in a mad dash through the woods, so do to the unearthly hollows and whispers of the nest. In the highest branches of the trees and down the forest floor, they're all around you. Casually keeping pace with your all out sprint, excuse me. We're almost there. As you and Stella reach the main road, the cries of the creatures fade back into the sounds of nature. It sounds like they stopped following us. 
I certainly can't smell that stench anymore. We should get reception now that they're back on the main road. We're back on the main road. Let me find my phone so I can call the sheriff. You feel a buzz in your pocket. Where the hell did you go? Where are you? Six missed calls from Tabitha and 13 text messages. Call her? We try and call Tabitha back, but it goes straight to voicemail. Text her that you're okay. Her message sits unread. Tabitha seems worried. It's pretty late, isn't it? Stella pulls out her phone and dials. Hello? Earl? It's Stella Richmond. I'm up on the mountain on a signet trail. Duke is dead, Earl. Shotgun. It happened right in front of us. There, There's something in the woods. Okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I think we're okay, but hurry. Jesus, Earl. Where's, who's gonna tell Bob? Bo. Damn. I guess now we wait. Girl, I'll be walking back to the, the Scarlet Estate. I'm not waiting. It takes a little while, but eventually a patrol car arrives at the scene. Out of it walks two officers, Sheriff Huggaby and a friendly older man named... And... Ooh! A friendly older man and Deputy Franklin. A serious man, wearing glasses despite being the... It takes a little while, but eventually a patrol car arrives at the scene. Out of it walks two officers, Sheriff Huggaby, a friendly older man, and Deputy Franklin, a serious man wearing sunglasses, despite it being the middle of the night. See, right there, a thing jumps out of the woods and then the shotgun goes off. What in the Sam Hill? What in the kind of, what is that? Some kind of Pillsbury Doughboy? Could be some naked maniac. As the video reveals the creature's nest, Franklin ever so slightly lowers his glasses whole bunch of naked maniacs what the hell is that some sort of crop circle they killed duke nah -uh. now we're gonna have to come oh uh-huh now how do i said nah -uh. no he not dead <laughs> uh-huh now we're gonna have to confiscate this camera miss richmond if you don't mind this is evidence but uh, okay just let me turn it off to save the battery here you go deputy franklin we appreciate your compliance with the law We'll get a team out in the morning to retrieve the body, but for now, Sheriff Huggaby and I... Please, call me Earl. Earl and I will escort you in... Who are you exactly? That's Pyrus. She came into town today for the funeral. Pyrus is in... Tabitha's cousin, yeah. Damn. I didn't think you'd actually show. We'll escort you both back to town. If there's a naked maniac on the loose, it's best you don't walk back on your own. It wasn't a... Never mind. Why aren't you going out there tonight? There's a dead body in the woods. Those things out there could attack someone else. Well, it ain't exactly like old Duke is going anywhere at this point. But we'll be, still be out there in the morning. We we'll only have a skeleton crew at the moment. Monday nights are Deputy Derrickson's bowling nights. We'll be on alert for any more reports of naked maniacs, but retrieving Duke will just have to wait. He can cancel bowling night to get the body. I'm sorry, that's crazy. Now, if you'll kindly step into this vehicle, we can return you safely to your home. Do we have to ride back with you? We can just walk. Those creatures left will be fine. I'm afraid I'm going to have to insist for your own safety. Sell us eyes. Okay, thank you. You can ride up front with me, little lady. That is, if your mama permits. What about you, Stella? What about Stella? She hates being in those wheeled contraptions. Sure, Earl. You can hold Gretchen on the way back to town. She probably needed to hold Gretchen. The Cusher. What? The who? The who? The cops usher you and Stella into the back of their squad car. You are just the cutest little things, Miss Gretchen. Yes, you are. Sheriff Huggaby pats Gretchen on the head affectionately, but she remains wholly focused on Stella. A worried look stretch across her little pug face as Huggaby scratches behind her ear. Stella stares out the window, oddly quiet. Oh my poor Stella. Neither of us make neither of us much like these awful metal beasts. If only I was able to comfort her. Confound this old man who reeks of coffee for keeping us apart. Hey Stella, you good? She doesn't respond.
place a comforting hand on her shoulder. You reach out and play, rest your palm gently on her shoulder. She jumps slightly at your touch, but you can feel some of her tension ease and hear her let out a self-soothing sigh. Remain silent. You sit quietly, watching the trees pass by in the light of the headlights. Every now and then, you think you see a pale face staring out the window before it slips back into the darkness. Soon, the rumble of gravel beneath the tires gives way to the uneven pavement, and the car comes to a stop in front of a small cottage. You two stay out of trouble. We'll have this all sorted out in the morning. Just get a good night's sleep. And you, whatever your name is, remain silent. You say nothing. Sure, you in town for the funeral? Good. Don't you go leaving before then. I imagine we'll need to ask you a few questions about everything you've seen tonight. Stella, keep an eye on her for us. Make sure she doesn't get into any more trouble. Y'all have a good night now. Bye-bye, Gretchie. And y'all have a lovely evening. If any bugaboos give you trouble, you know how to get in touch. Holla. <laughs> they, they need to add a holla at the end of that. <laughs> and here you are. Back in town, away from the woods, with no one but Stella in sight. Holy shit. Okay, Stella, why the hell? <laughs> this will be me. <laughs> I'm not really good at reading um, social cues. So I'd be like, Stella, what the fuck was that about? But yeah, I would totally get the, this look from her. Um, how are you holding up? How am I holding up? I mean, not great, but I'm more worried about you. I can't believe they just implied that you're a suspect, even after we showed them all of that footage. Even after we found that nest but it's okay i'm not gonna let anything bad happen to you nor will i though i have a little understanding of police work police work i was there i filmed i saw the whole thing i was there i filmed the whole thing at the very least it'll never hold up in court and i know it won't get the point either and it won't get to that point either because we're going to do a little investigating of our own we gotta find out more about those things if we can get clearer footage or better yet, trap one of them. There's no way they can blame you for what happened. The library doesn't open for a while, but I've read every book on cryptids they have and never came across anything like this. But there is someone in town who might have some useful information. My friend's mom. The place isn't far. We should head over now before it gets any later. I should... Checking on Tabitha. My friend's place is on the way back and stopping by shouldn't take long. You sure you don't want to stop in first? I know I wouldn't want to head up that mountain road by myself after everything that's happened tonight. You cannot go to the tea shop? I should really head back. Okay, if you're sure. I won't stop you if that's what you really want. Here's my number. Call me when you get there, okay? And good luck. You and Stella exchange numbers. I'll see you tomorrow. Say nothing in response. Stay safe, buddy. Good luck. We begin the long hike back up to the Scarlet Estate alone. As far as you know, those creatures from the woods have infested in these trails as well. But it's too late for you to turn around. You'll either make it back to the estate or you won't. What the f- What? What is this? What? Papyrus? Oh my god, y'all. That made my- That made my heart jump so- Oh my god. Have you ever been swallowed up? What was that? I don't even know why I said that. I'm so sorry. You turn to see a shadowy figure in a miner's jacket staring at you from the path behind. I can't even read, y'all. That's scared. That, his eyes. Why don't he got his napkin? You didn't hear the, it, it. Oh my God, I'm stuttering. I'm so scared. Welcome home. Who are you? You call out to the figure, but as soon as your words leave your mouth, it vanishes into the bleak, oh, the black of the night. Continue down the path. Almost home. 
you've made it. Your salvation in sight. You make a mad dash to the door. Try the door. Oh, thank God you're back. Where the hell have you been? I called you back as soon as I had reception. I don't care. You gave me a heart attack. The miner on the road back home. I, I saw a miner. Scared the shit out of me. Do you know what's going on there? It's a mining town. Of course, miners walk around in the woods. Um. I watched a man die at night. Wait, I went to the woods with this girl. I, I met to find some cryptids and ended up with us watching a man die. Oh, so you met Stella then. Mm, that explains everything. And she's gotten you all worked up. I'm going to bed. I'll see you tomorrow. Wait, you don't want to hang out? I'm still hyped up on adrenaline from tonight. I would love to just hang out for a little while. Cool down for a bit. No, I'm not going to hang out with you. It's late. I'm tired. I'm going to bed. Don't do anything stupid while I'm asleep. Just go to your room and sleep. You're alone in the estate. The sound of the wind whistling through the wood, the woods. The house gives you an uneasy feeling in your gut. It's probably best to turn in and try to leave the night behind you. I think I'm going to keep that as my canon, y'all. I'm just going to... Hell no, I'm going to fuck home, girl. Hell no. As you settle in your room, you remember that Stella asked you to call her once you got back. Let's call her. You pull out your phone and call. Hey, how are you? She sounds a little different, like she's been crying. Did you make it back all right? I ran into something weird on the way back. A miner? I guess. He knew my name. The whole thing really gave me the heebie-jeebies. Huh, that's weird. I think I've got some interesting leads, too. We can compare notes tomorrow. Until then, get some sleep, all right? I'm glad you're safe. From the, relatively s from the relative safety of this uncomfortable bed, the events of the past evening seemed like something that happened to someone else, but you can still clearly picture the terror you felt in those moments. But for now, you're safe and you're warm. Eventually, the sun will rise and chase away the monsters and make them seem like nothing but bad dreams. But tomorrow, if you're lucky, you'll wake up in a normal world and have a boring week in the mountains with your sour-faced cousin. It's a nice thought, but deep down you can't help but worry that things will only get worse. Alrighty, y'all. If you guys like this episode, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content from me. This is honestly just us going back through Scarlet Hollow. Just really chill. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you have a wonderful, fantastic night or day wherever you are in this Pillsbury Doughboy filled universe. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have been Pyrus, and I am out.
Tschüss. See ya.